I have been on I-20 so many times that I have learned one thing about the interstates. That's not traveling. That's driving. So today, I'm going to try to take you back in time to some places that are uh, dear to your heart, some of you. We were talking just about that a few minutes ago. And take you to some places that I like to tell people is a lot like visiting with your grandparents. And this is a book that many of you have already bought before, Classic Carolina Road Trips, which takes you to 62 places around the state that are not tourist traps. Well, let's start with a, a little sip of 7-Up right here. She mentioned those picker boys, American pickers. This is exactly the kind of sign that they would love to get their hands on. And it's free and available for now on the side of a beautiful country store in a little spot in the road called Vertry, South Carolina. <laughs> Vertry's on Highway 10 between McCormick, South Carolina and um, the Greenwood area. And here's how I came by this particular place and the store that has an interesting little story behind it. One day I was rather bored in my office and I took a map of South Carolina out and I put my finger down like this and I said, I'm going to go to Sumter? No. I tried again, and I hit a little spot called Promised Land. There is a Promised Land, South Carolina. So I took off and I went to find Promised Land, and I came across this old country store. This is that store. Now, let me tell you about the South. I don't know about other parts of the country because I've never lived there. But the surest way in the world to get attention in the South, out in the country, is to stop and get out and put a camera on a tripod <laughs> and start taking photographs. Sooner or later, someone's going to come up and hear what they say. Are you from the tax office? <laughs> <laughs> so I was setting my camera up this particular day to take a gorgeous picture of this old store that's 170 something years old. Wow. And I hear a diesel truck rumbling up. <laughs> it's a huge black diesel truck. You have to look up at the driver. He's a young man in his 40s. That's young to me now. And he says, can I help you, mister? I said, well, I'd like to take a picture of this store. He said, he said, it's been in my family five generations. I'm thinking about tearing it down. I said, oh, it's a gorgeous old store. Why would you want to do that? He said, well, the roof's collapsing. And I'd have torn it down by now, but I'm scared to fall in on it. He sat frowning and grimacing and wiping his face and holding his, hand, his head in his hands for about 20 seconds. Like I had asked him some terrible question. And then he said, in true Southern style, I reckon it's okay. <laughs> so I took pictures. I said, well, tell me about Promised Land. That's really where I'm headed. He said, well, Promised Land has a great history. He said, there was a gentleman in Promised Land that had um, some slaves in the 1840s. The sports of the war. And he promised them that when he passed away, they would get 100 acres of land. And he said, and that's exactly what happened. So when the Civil War was going full bore, they already had their land they owned here in the South, which is highly unusual. So promised land, which sounds biblical, reaching back to the Bible, is in fact a great story 